Why are not losing stubborn belly fat? Have you ever consistently gone to the gym, worked your butt off, done daily cardio, stuck to your diet like never before? A month goes by and no progress. I've been there before and this is the most common problem with most people who've tried to lose weight. Fitness can be oversimplified or overcomplicated, but if you do the basics right, you'll always see results. This is how I looked when I stopped making these mistakes. The best part was I was putting in half the effort. At the time, I thought my metabolism was broken. Maybe my body isn't as efficient as it was in my teens or that I had terrible genetics. All those theories were wrong. In this video, I'll be explaining the mistakes you're making and how to fix them to finally lose that stubborn fat. But before we dive in, a lot of research and editing goes into making a video like this. Just do me one favor, if you wouldn't mind, gently hit the like button, be greatly appreciated. If you enjoy this kind of content, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're new. Let's kick it off. Mistake number one, metabolic positioning. For a good portion of people starting a diet, for the first time, they'll be able to jump right in, tick all the boxes, caloric deficit, resistance training, cardio and steps. However, there are those individuals who have already tried dieting, lost some weight and hit a plateau or done too much cardio with no results. This applies to most people who look to burn that last bit of stubborn fat and there's a scientific explanation for why this happens. We know the energy balance equation. Weight change equals calories in minus calories out. The calories in part of the segment is covered by the food you consume. The calories out is far more complex and contains the root of our first mistake, stopping you from losing that stubborn fat. When scientists or fitness coaches speak of metabolism, they're typically referring to total daily energy expenditure, also known as your TDEE. It's the total number of calories you burn each day. This is broken into three key factors. Firstly, your basal metabolic rate. Secondly, the thermic effect of food and thirdly, your physical activity level, which accounts for 20 to 30% of your total daily energy expenditure. Now, focusing more on your physical activity, you also have your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. It is the energy expended from everything we do that is not sleeping, eating, or sports-like exercises. It ranges from energy expended walking to working, typing, performing yard work, undertaking any tasks and even fidgeting. When in a caloric deficit for an extended period of time, your body senses the decline in food intake and automatically decreases energy expenditure by down-regulating your NEAT. NEAT increases with overfeeding and decreases with underfeeding. This can result in something as simple as fidgeting less, but it can also present a severe fatigue if you're dieting for too long or too hard. As you diet longer, your body finds intriguing subconscious ways to preserve energy. This is a key driver for the slowed metabolism that you often see with chronic dieters. Your metabolism adapts to a varying degree to burn less calories than it normally would at your given an amount of body tissue, your muscle and fat, in a different metabolic position. So you may be training hard, doing one hour cardio, hitting your macros and finding yourself being sedentary the rest of the day leading to the inability to really create a caloric deficit and lose fat. The solution, and I do this often with one-on-one -on -one coaching, is take a diet break. Depending on how long and how low your calories are and how much cardio you've been doing, a range of four to eight weeks of a diet break is recommended. Simply cut your current amount of cardio in half or more and aim for maintenance calories. I say this because I care about you about the approach and this approach will give you long-term success. This way, you'll have a positive metabolic adaptation, increase your need, a boost in metabolism and minimal weight gain. When you then decide to go back into caloric deficit, you'll find that you're dropping weight at a better rate and also feeling much better psychologically. Before we jump into the next two common mistakes, 
What has helped me avoid all these in my experience is having a coach. Having a coach leaves all the stress off your shoulders in terms of planning your own diet, keeping yourself accountable and having someone to ask all these questions that you've never been able to understand and someone who can teach you all the knowledge and that's exactly what I do with my coaching. It's Black Friday, this entire week I'm having the biggest sale of the year using the discount code Black Friday 30, you'll get 30% off my coaching. We communicate via WhatsApp. We build the diet to your plan and I'm there to guide you and transfer all my knowledge in terms of everything that I know so we can reach your final destination. If you're gonna make a transformation, it's now the first link in the description, one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. Let's move on to mistake number two. Mistake number two, underestimating calories is a common mistake. A 2002 study compared two groups. Group one had professional dietitians who had experience in recording food intake, and group two, which had very little experience. The results? The dietitians underreported their energy intake obtained from the food records by an average of 223 calories to a range of 116 calories per day, which is not different from their energy expenditure. Participants in the control group, as hypothesized, significantly underreported their intake by 429 calories, meaning that this is very easy to overeat if you're not experienced. And overeating 400 to 500 calories is enough to keep you out of a caloric deficit and explains exactly why you aren't making any progress despite your efforts. Here's a perfect example. Here are two rice cakes with peanut butter. However, one of them has 150 calories extra of peanut butter. You barely notice the difference. Another example is oats. Here are two bowls, but one bowl has an extra 200 calories of oats. The solution is simple. If you possibly use a food scale to accurately measure the foods you're consuming, after a few weeks of tracking, you have a better idea of the food that you're consuming. Mistake number three, drastically dropping calories too quickly. We live in a very fast world where people want results. And according to PlasticSurgery.org, liposuction is the second most performed surgery in the world right after breast augmentation. The next best option is crash dieting. My standard caloric deficit recommendations for weight loss are between 20 and 25%. In my own experience, when going deeper into caloric deficit too quickly, it's resulted in low compliance. What happens is ghrelin, the hunger hormone, has an aggressive spike as a result of a low caloric intake. If at any point your mental strength gives into your hunger, overindulging is a common result. A scenario where you take one step forward and two steps back. To reiterate, there's no problem being in a deep caloric deficit too quickly but you should be prepared for the consequences of doing this. Thank you for sticking all the way to the end of the video. I know everyone who's watching right now are real ones, people who truly, truly support. That being said, I'm doing a $100 giveaway for the next video. All you need to do is comment down below which are the most common mistakes you've made in your own experience in terms of dieting. I will pick one winner of $100 and you'll be able to pick anything. And the winner of the previous video is Flenio Rodriguez, congratulations. Send me a DM on Instagram. And speaking of common mistakes, again, my coaching, it's Black Friday. Use the discount code Black Friday 30 if you're serious about coaching, it's the first thing in the description. And finally, my sponsors, EHP Labs, is having a massive 60% off sale on their site. So it is also in there using the discount code Diamonds10. We'll give you a discount. This is a perfect time to pick up supplements, especially the Oxy Shred, which you guys love, and also the Isopept Way or Oxy Way. So go and check that out. Link in the description. I'm going to leave it there. Again, I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you guys to bits. Thank you for all the support. Bye.